The GBI Division of Forensic Sciences receives and analyzes hundreds of thousands of pieces of evidence every year. The results of these tests provide investigators with valuable leads and aid district attorneys in the successful prosecution of cases. In an ongoing effort to better serve Georgia's law enforcement community and to ensure that requests are completed in a timely manner, the DOFS crime labs have enhanced their evidence receiving standards. How evidence is packaged can impact the outcome of testing. So it is imperative that the standards set by the lab are followed. The first step in submitting evidence to the crime lab is to fill out an evidence submission form. Remember, all requests made of the lab must be related to criminal or coroner investigations. The lab does not work any other cases. With that in mind, the standard evidence submission form requires only absolutely necessary information. This form must be filled out and provided along with every piece of evidence brought to the lab. Exceptions to this rule are the requests for blood alcohol testing and urine-only testing kits. Both of these kits have their own submission forms enclosed within the kits. All evidence submission forms must be legibly filled out in their entirety and should include the following data if applicable. The agency name and agency case number, the date of incident, the victim's and or subject's name. Make sure that spellings are correct. These names will be entered exactly as they are shown on the first submission form and will not be changed with additional submissions. The case officer or agent's name and contact information. A brief description of the evidence, including the date, time, and location of collection, if relevant. The name of the doctor, medical examiner, or technician, if applicable. Designate all services requested per item. Be specific. If there is more than one service or a complete analysis is required, please specify. The various services will have to be coordinated by the lab to prevent any damage or loss of evidentiary value. Include all other agencies that need to access this report. Requests for trace evidence or forensic biology must be accompanied by an incident report. Use the supplemental submission form for additional requests and descriptions. Remember, it is important to explain the significance of the evidence in relation to the crime. Once the evidence submission form has been completed, the delivering officer or agent must date timestamp the form at the laboratory. The form should be attached to the outside of the evidence packages. Be sure to retain a copy for your records. If using a form downloaded from the GBI website, print two copies and again date timestamp copies at the laboratory. Attach the original to the evidence packages, retaining a copy for your files. The website version of the submission form can be found at dofs.gbi.georgia.gov under Downloads. Before the crime lab can accept evidence submissions, the evidence itself must be packaged correctly. It is important that all items be identified on the outside packaging, including the agency name and case number, subject or victim name, and a brief description. This information must match that on the submission form. Any discrepancy between the information on the evidence and that of the form can significantly delay the testing of your evidence. Note. First name unknown, last name unknown, John Doe, etc., cannot be accepted as the subject's name. Once the evidence packaging is labeled, the bag or container must be heat sealed, placed in a self sealing bag, or sealed with tamper evident evidence tape. If using this method, a complete seal must be achieved by wrapping the tape around the edges of the seal. Clear packing tape may be used to secure a package that requires more strength to close. Then tamper evident tape can be placed across this securing tape. The sealing officer must then initial this seal. Drug evidence must be double bagged in clear plastic bags. The outer sealed bag should measure at least 8 inches by 10 inches. Remember, submitting agencies are responsible for ensuring that the chain of custody is as short as possible. It is critical that the evidence is not damaged or contaminated while in your possession.
That is why it's so important that evidence be stored in a cool, dry location prior to being brought to the lab. In some instances, each item should be placed in separate containers to prevent cross-contamination. An important part of the process is selection of packaging. Make sure that appropriate storage is used for each evidence type. Biohazardous materials and liquids must be placed in leak-proof containers that prevent leakage during handling, storage, and transport. Evidence such as blood alcohol and toxicology samples must be submitted in approved BA, tox, or urine-only kits. Requests for HIV or hepatitis testing should be submitted directly to the Department of Human Resources. Call 404-327-7981 for further information. Because the GBI Division of Forensic Sciences does not test biological disease-causing agents nor chemical warfare agents, we ask that you not bring them to any of our state crime laboratories. Contact the FBI for instructions. There are several collection kits authorized by DOFS for proper packaging of some types of evidence. Blood alcohol toxicology, urine only, sexual assault, trace hair only, gunshot residue, glass pipe. Ensure submission form is included in the kit and evidence specimens are labeled before sealing the kit. Vendor information is available on the website dofs.gbi.georgia.gov. As always, with any evidence submission, the appropriate warning labels must be visibly affixed to the packaging. These labels are mandatory and ensure the safety of lab employees who are handling the evidence. Safety is a high priority. The lab requires all firearms to be unloaded prior to mailing or submission to the lab. If a loaded firearm needs to be submitted due to unusual case circumstances, you must call ahead and make this known at the time of submission at the evidence receiving window. All flammable or other hazardous chemicals and materials must be packaged in a vapor-tight container and be delivered in person. The chemistry section does not accept syringes or contents of syringes without prior authorization from the section or laboratory manager. Please call ahead to speak with someone about your specific case needs. All sharp items or implements, such as knives or glass shards, are to be packaged in a manner to prevent items from piercing the container and causing injury. Proportionately sized cardboard boxes will work well. The outside of the packaging must be labeled sharp item in bold lettering. Razor blades or field test kits are not accepted. Requests for HIV or hepatitis testing should be submitted directly to the Department of Human Resources. Latent prints on drug evidence. This evidence must be separated before submission. Muzzle to target distance tests without the weapon involved. Determination as to how long since weapon fired. No contact DNA. To make it more convenient for our customers, the Division of Forensic Sciences has placed evidence depository boxes called lock boxes in each of the crime laboratories across the state. The secured containers are designed to store evidence for a short period of time and can be accessed during lab hours, Monday through Friday, from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The lock boxes reduce delays in the submission process for investigators and officers. It also allows lab techs to expedite the workflow more efficiently. Carefully follow all posted instructions when using the lock boxes. With the exception of biological materials, all evidence is returned to the submitting agencies upon completion of lab services. Due to budget constraints, it is necessary for all agencies to make arrangements to regularly pick up their completed evidence. Please inquire at the evidence receiving window when submitting evidence as to whether your agency has evidence ready to be returned. Calling ahead with a specific date and time of pickup can expedite the process by having the evidence pulled and ready to go. Transfer receipts will be provided with all returned evidence. Ensure that your evidence information is accurate and complete that the evidence packages are properly sealed, initialed, and labeled before placing into the lockbox. Reports are available by accessing our secure website. 
If you are unable to access your report, please contact your agency site manager. Each agency has their own site manager who has authority to provide access to officers and agents and assign passwords. Here at the GBI Division of Forensic Sciences, we know how valuable evidence is to a case. We will continue to provide you, the law enforcement community, with quality services you need to do your job. Together, in compliance with these standards, we can ensure that evidence gets a chance to tell its story in court. For the most up-to-date information or answers to any questions this presentation did not address, please call the Regional Crime Laboratory serving your area or go to the GBI Division of Forensic Sciences website.